alongside the pyramids of Giza, the tomb of Tutankhamun is one of the most famous places in Egypt. In this video, I will take you on a little journey to this place. Don't be surprised if you see several black and white pictures. It was taken by Harry Burton, an Egyptologist who was the photographer of a team that discovered the tomb. And thanks to him, we have plenty of pictures of everything that was found in the tomb. At the time of Tutankhamun, around 1350 before Christ, it has been a long time since the pharaohs are no longer buried in pyramids or even in the north of a country, but in a very particular place that we found in the south of Egypt and that we call the Valley of the Kings. This valley is in the middle of a desertic mountain where no flowers, trees or even shrubs grow. While walking for whole days in this mountain, I never came across any animal, not even a fly or a mosquito. It would be hard to imagine this kind of scenery in the Pyrenees or the Alps. This mountain, which is called the Theban mountain, is very unique. It was dug everywhere with thousands of tombs. You have a tombs era of the craftsmen who built and decorated the tombs of influential people. You have several eras where the nobles were buried. The era called the Valley of the Queens, and which is the cemetery of queens, princesses and princes. And finally, the era called the Valley of the Kings, which was particularly reserved to the pharaohs and which is much better hidden than all the others in the Theban mountain. In this era, the tombs of the kings go deep into the mountain, and when the pharaoh was buried, the entrance to his tomb was hidden by a large quantity of stone and soil so that on the surface one could not guess that there was a tomb underneath. You see, the tombs of the Valley of the Kings are very different from the pyramids. In the first case, you are hidden, and in the other, you can't miss the tomb of a pharaoh in the landscape. The tomb of Tutankhamun is first in the Valley of the Kings. Remember, I told you in the video I dedicated to him that Tutankhamun died at a very young age between 18 and 20 years old, and his tomb was not ready. So he was buried in another tomb which is very small, since it's the second smallest tomb in the Valley of the Kings. Inside, there were only four small rooms, in which we will take a little tour. As I told you, all the tombs in the Valley of the Kings go down into the mountain. So we will start by going down the 16 steps that lead to the first door of a tomb. So be careful, when I see a door, it's not a door that can be opened and closed like at home. What is called a door in an Egyptian tomb is an opening that will be permanently closed by a wall of dried mud bricks after burial. Once the brick wall was built, it was covered with fresh mud and stamped with a symbol of the Valley of the Kings, which often shows the god Enobis. So, as I told you in another video, Anubis is the god of mummification, but when it's depicted entirely in the form of a jackal, he becomes the god who protects the tombs. And in the Valley of the Kings, he had a hell of a job because we found more than 60 tombs in the era. Logically, he was chosen as the emblem of a seal, that is the stamp, which marked the brick walls. Anubis often dominates the representation of the enemies of Egypt, were defeated by the king. And sometimes we also found cartridges stamped with the name of Neb Reperura, which is the coronation name of Tutankhamun. Remember, we saw it in the video on the pharaoh. The cartouche is a cord that surrounds the name of a king to protect and showcase it. The Egyptologist who discovered the tomb, Howard Carter, took pictures of these stamps and then he broke the wall to see what was behind. Once the first entrance is passed, the tomb goes a little further into the mountain through a sloping corridor of about 8 meters. And guess what? This hallway led to a new door. Well, now you know what that means. It was a wall made of bricks that prevented intruders from going further. Howard Carter decided to do what he did before. 
He took pictures and broke the wall into several pieces that he put aside to study the stamp on it later. That's it, we're finally in the first real room of the tomb. And there, Howard Carter was in a real shock, because until then, nobody has ever found a pharaoh's tomb with so many objects inside. He made a hole in the door which opens in this room. He has found clues that thieves have entered the tomb in ancient times, and he had no idea what he was going to find on the other side of the hole. He lights a candle and puts it in the hole. And suddenly, he feels like he had stumbled upon Ali Baba's cave. Everywhere the light falls, there are hundreds of objects, many of them covered with gold and boxes, many of them that certainly contain beautiful objects. This room is small, much smaller than your classroom, but everywhere Egyptians peeled up a lot of objects, boxes, chairs and beds. They even peeled up in a corner two huge chariots that have been entirely dismantled. I'm going to show you some of my favorite objects. I hope you will like them too. This is a wooden mannequin that is supposed to represent a young king. Can you imagine this? People like you and me, your simple angers, why Tutankhamun had a human-sized anger that represents him. This is a vase stopper that also represents Tutankhamun. That's so classy. Can you imagine a bottle of water or fruit juice representing your head? Some privilege came with being a pharaoh. And you might have noticed that the young king had both ears pierced. In ancient times, men wore the same jewelry as women. Come on now, and let's leave the empty chamber and see what's underneath this giant bed. Look, when Howard Carter cleaned up the area a bit, he realized that the ancient thieves had made a huge hole in the wall. So in fact, the thieves made a hole, not in the stone, but in another door, a smaller one than the two others, which had also been closed by a brick wall. This room was called the Annex by the archaeologist, because it's very small. It's a 4 by 2.5 meters in width. The Annex is the smallest room of a tomb, yet it's the most cluttered room. Indeed, Howard Carter found more than 2,000 objects in this room. All those numbers you see are the numbers that were assigned to each of the objects that the archaeologist found, so that we could know exactly where they were found once they were out of the tomb. Here are my two favorite objects. A gaming table on which you can see a board that represents the game of Senate. It was played in pairs with frill-shaped pieces or more triangular ones. As in the game of goes, they were good squares and bad squares, but we don't know for sure how the Egyptians played it, because at the time, the rules of the games were not written down. As most people could not read, the rules were simply passed on orally. The Egyptians, being very clever, the game box was also used as a board that could be turned upside down, so here we have another game board. But we don't know how the Egyptians played it or even what they called it. My other favorite item is a boat carved from a beautiful yellow stone. The front of a boat represents an oryx, a kind of wild antelope, and on each side you can see two pretty female dwarfs wearing beautiful wigs. The hull of a boat has been dug out all around, so in ancient times water must have been poured into a space around it, to give the impression that the boat was floating. So, do you think I have good taste? I hope you enjoyed these two objects. Now, let's go back to the empty chamber to see what's going on on the other side of a fourth door that appears in the wall. On the other side, there is once again a small room, which we call the burial chamber. This room was invaded by a huge wooden box covered with gold that is called a chapel. Do you know the system of Russian dolls? Well, here we have the same thing. The huge chapel contained a golden box, which contained another golden box, which also contained a fourth one that protected a huge sarcophagus made of stone. And here again, 
The sarcophagus contained a huge wooden coffin covered with gold, which contained another big coffin also made of golden wood, which contained a coffin all in gold. Without any surprise, Howard Carter found in this magnificent coffin a mummy of Tutankhamun, protected in several layers of cloth, while his head was covered with a splendid golden mask of 10 kilos. And as he was a king, magnificent jewels were put all around his head, neck, forearms, wrist, fingers, waist and ankles. Now let's go to the last room of a tomb that we call the treasury. This is the last room in the tomb, and it's just as interesting as the other three rooms. Do you know why it was nicknamed the treasury? Well, simply because it's in this room that the Egyptians put away the majority of the jewels of a young king in beautiful boxes. Unfortunately, the thieves succeeded in entering this last room and taking a lot of things. Thanks to the labels that were attached to the boxes and the inscriptions painted in ink on them, Howard Carter was able to know what they originally contained, and so he knew what had been stolen. And the result is not good at all. The thieves took the equivalent of 60% of the jewels that were kept in this room. See what 60% of jewellery mean. Here is one of my favourite necklaces of Tutankhamun, which must have been very heavy to wear. At the very top, we see a small Tutankhamun protected by the gods Toph and Ra. Underneath, a magnificent protective eye framed by two cobras carrying a sun on their heads. And you know why? Because they are sacred cobras, which are under the orders of the god of the sun. The cobras and the eye are on a boat and underneath is a beautiful wind scrub. This lovely stone that represents the insect is extraterrestrial. That is to say that it comes from a meteorite that eat the earth. Moreover, at the side of Tutankhamun, one also found a dagger which has been worked in an iron coming also from a meteorite. And once again, we can say that it's too classy. Among the other beautiful pieces of this tomb, there is this magnificent wooden statue that represents Enobis. You may now know that it's supposed to protect the tomb when it's in its animal form. Well, concerning the protection of Tutankhamun, he failed, because thieves have broken in twice in ancient times. Maybe it happened right when he was on vacation? I also love the impressive collection of boats that were in this room. Howard Carter found over 60. These boats symbolized navigation from the East Bank, where most of the villages and towns were located, to the West Bank, where the cemeteries were located. But they also evoke the passage between the world of the living and the world of the dead. We have reached the end of this visit, and I hope you enjoyed it. I wish you that one day you will have the opportunity to witness his tomb, as well as the fabulous collection of objects of the young king, which is today exposed in the Grand Egyptian Museum of Cairo.